Doc, you better back up. We don't have enough road to get up to 88. Roads? Where we're going, we don't need roads. Hey, Marty! Ma Marty! Marty, I wanna, I wanna just show you these new matchbooks for my auto detailing I had printed up. Flying DeLorean? Hello, Simon here from Craft of Bricks. What you're looking at right now is a modified version of the recently released LEGO Creator Expert Back to the Future Time Machine. This is of course set number 10300. It has 1,872 parts and is an advanced model targeted to 18 plus adult LEGO builders. Now while the designer of this model has done a superb job at capturing the DeLorean Time Machine vehicle from the Back to the Future movies in LEGO form, this model unfortunately has some significant issues. These include the excessive use of bright off-color scheme parts that ruin the displayability of this model, gullwing doors that do not remain open, and several cosmetic issues like missing details and odd gaps in the bodywork of the model. I've corrected all of these issues, and in this video, I'm gonna talk you through the fixes that I've made and provide the information that you will need to be able to fix your own model so that it can be the beautiful and amazing display piece that it's meant to be. Let's jump right in to talk about Lego's excessive use of brightly colored off color scheme parts for the internals and the underside of this model. Now I do appreciate that Lego are increasingly using brightly colored parts for the internals of many of their more recent Lego sets to help improve the readability of the building instructions. Unfortunately, however, for this Back to the Future Time Machine Lego set, They've taken this practice, I think, a bit to the extreme, so much so that if you're building the standard model, I have my modified model with me on screen now, but if you're building the standard version, the only views where you're gonna see a clean on-color scheme look is if you're looking at the model directly from the side with the doors closed or kind of from that front, uh, front quarter top-down type view. Any other view, and especially the underside, which I'm about to show you soon, you're gonna see bright, parts, off-color scheme type of parts in yellows, reds, blues, white, and so on. And unfortunately, this really ruins the displayability of this particular set. I'm gonna show you photos of the standard build of this model that come from Jay's excellent review of this model that he's published on his blog. And I'll put a link to this review article in the description of the video for you to check out later on. Looking at the underside of the model, we can see that it is a complete dog's breakfast of weird colors, meaning that if you want to display this model on a stand in its flying state, you're gonna see parts that are in yellow, red, white, orange, dark nougat, and bright blue. The cabin is also a mess with all sorts of off-colored parts visible in the foot wells, near the dashboard, and around the doors. The front boot, if you open it up, also shows off a lot of off-colored parts. And again, if displaying the model in its flying mode, you're gonna see all sorts of off-colored parts in the wheel recesses. And finally, when viewing the rear of the model, your eye is distracted by the bright red, tan, and light blue pieces when you should be focusing on the cool technical details of the time machine. To fix this issue, I've carefully poured over the instructions and I've been able to swap out absolutely all of the off-colored parts for counterpart parts colored in black, medium stone gray, and dark stone gray. Now you may think this is too much of a change, but hear me out. As I was going through this process, building my model and documenting the steps for where you will need to make part color changes if you wanna fix your model too, I noticed two things. The model just started to look and feel that much more cool and impressive as I built it. I really felt like I was building a beautiful scale model of the DeLorean Back to the Future time machine versus a toy. The second thing that I noticed as I progressed in the build was how impressive the building techniques used to represent the form and shape of this iconic vehicle in LEGO are. Without the distraction of all those crazy off-color parts, I was actually able to see and appreciate how well this model has been designed and crafted by Sven Franick, who is the LEGO designer for this model. At the end of this build, this is how many parts were removed from the model and swapped out for correctly colored parts that actually match the color scheme of the model. And to me, this is shocking. And I'm gonna say it bordering on negligence from Lego, given this is an expensive set marketed under the Creator Expert theme and is targeted to adult experienced Lego builders. This use of off colors really should not be the case. 
But as you can see, after doing this fix, the model, regardless of what angle you look at it, has a clean and consistent look to it. And your eye is drawn to and appreciates not only all of the cool angles, features, and details of the DeLorean Back to the Future time machine, but also the color details where color matters, like the transparent blue for the electrical details and color technical elements of the rear engine and reactor of the model. To do this modification, you will need to order replacement parts from Bricklink, and I've published an inventory of the parts that you will need for this mod on Rubricable. You'll also need to download the detailed notes that I've compiled for all of the part swaps. You'll then need to read these notes along with LEGO's official building instructions in an as-you-go manner when you build the model, so that at each building step you know exactly what parts to swap in for the off-coloured parts when you encounter them as you build. By way of example, to show you what I mean, if we look at building step number 11 in the official LEGO instructions, you will see that in my notes for this step, I've said replace the four 2x2 L plates in yellow with the same parts in black, and also replace the four 1x1 brackets in dark orange with the same parts in black. One important thing to note before I move on to talk about the next fix for this model is that if you're interested in doing these off-color scheme parts fixes to make your model look like mine, I would recommend you buy the parts from Bricklink and have those received before you start building your model as you'll need to actually apply the part swaps right from building step number six in the instructions. And you wanna apply these fixes in an as-you-go as manner, building the set for the very first time. Unfortunately, if you've already built the model, it's almost impossible to apply all of these fixes retrospectively without disassembling your model and starting again. This next issue has certainly been commented on a lot in reviews of this model so far. And that is, if you open the gullwing doors on either side, Unfortunately, due to the heavy weight of the door construction, they won't remain open, and as you can see, they simply drop closed. Mock Designer Top Aces has published an incredibly simple and I think ingenious mod to fix this issue. His mod involves only a handful of parts that add props that can be hinged up to prop the doors open in their fully open position. You'll see that at step 181 in the instructions, there are several 2x6x2 bricks in black that are fitted to the model. All you need to do is to emit the brick at the back of the cabin and replace that with the assembly designed by Top Aces, then proceed with your build. This model is also very easy to do after you've already built the model and the instructions that Top Aces provides for this mod show you the steps you'll need to do to partially and temporarily disassemble the rear cabin of the model to fit the prop assembly. Please note that at the time of filming this overhead view to show you this mod, I'd slotted in the 4x2 Technic L-beams into the inside holes of the two Technic 2x1 bricks. Later on, I realized that the L-beams needed to be shifted to be in the outside holes to ensure there's enough space to fit the flux capacitor assembly in the cabin. I'm very impressed with the simplicity, effectiveness, and inconspicuous design of this mod. Thank you to you Top Aces for sharing this design with our LEGO enthusiast community. If you would like to modify your set with this fix, I'll put a link to the rubricable page for Top Aces mod in the description of the video. While I was building this model and also when assessing the finished build after doing all of the off-color part fixes, there were several cosmetic fixes and improvements that I want to make to this model. So let me take you through those now. And if you like what you see in this section of the video and you wanna make the same improvements to your own model, then you'll find the information about the parts required and the mod instructions on the rubricable page that I've linked to in the description of the video. Let's start from the front and work our way to the back of the model. I've added a one by one round tile and a one by one round plate to the connection points that are either side at the front of the DeLorean to balance the connection points for the wiring. I've also swapped out the one by six by five large panel used for the bonnet for three one by two by five bricks. The reason for this is the large panel has a plastic injection molding point on its surface that looks very ugly. The part was also scratched in my case, and this has been commented on in several reviews of this model. That large panel seems to have a color mismatch issue to the surrounding medium stone gray bricks and elements used to build the bonnet. I found that the three bricks I used gave the bonnet a more consistent look. The large panel seemed to weirdly draw my eye to it and definitely not in a good way. For the standard build, you're gonna notice a very prominent gap between the windshield and roof of the vehicle. It looks worse in person than you may realize if you're only viewing photos of this model online. And I want to get rid of this, so if you wanna do this change too, this is what you'll need to do. 
Remove the 1x3 plates and two 1x2 plate and ball socket elements from the top of the windshield and replace these with a single 1x10 plate in medium stone grey. Also remove the two 1x2 plates with ball elements from the roof assembly and replace these with a 1x4 plate in dark stone grey. What this means then is that the windshield can freely rest up against the roof edge and yes this does mean that the windshield is not fixed in place at the top but this isn't an issue as the windscreen seems well secured by the hinge plates at its base. Speaking of those, I replaced the hinge plates at the bottom of the windscreen with the same parts in medium stone grey. This seemed to look much better than them being in black. And finally, to close up the gap between the bonnet and the windscreen, added in two loose 1x6 tiles in medium stone grey. This is an extremely tight fit and it means opening the bonnet is very difficult. But once you've done this series of changes and pushed everything together firmly, there are no unsightly gaps from the front of the model all the way up through to the roof. For the sand blue elements on the top of the roof and also at the rear bumper of the model, I replaced the 1x2 plates with 1x2 tiles in the same sand blue colour. The plates just looked odd given that 95% of the model has a smooth and studless look to it. One thing that bugged me about the cabin interior is that the centre console between the seats has a lot of exposed studs and looks very basic. So what I've done to address this is to add several 1x2 slope elements in dark stone grey, a printed tile with some technical details and some black tiles to fill out the console a little more. And I think this looks much improved than the standard version. And finally we come to what I think is a must do mod for this model. When you build the standard model, you will notice that at the rear of the model where the reactor and technical details are, that there are two very large voids either side of the light brick immediately behind the cabin that have no greebling or detail at all. It looks very weird in person and Vlash from YouTube channel Racing Brick in his review of this model commented on this same issue. Furthermore, you can see the off color scheme red, tan and blue elements very clearly in these void spaces which makes this issue even more of an eyesore when viewing the rear of the model. If we take a look at images of the Back to the Future time machine online, either images of the original movie cars, scale models, or fan-made replicas, we can see that on the left in this area, there should be a cylindrical device, and on the right, a rectangular device and some additional technical details. I've replicated these details in Lego form and I've also filled out the voids to give the rear area of the model a more fleshed out, accurate and detailed look to it. You will have noticed too that I've opted to build the model representing the vehicle that we see in the Back to the Future 2 movie with the Mr. Fusion reactor as I actually think this iteration looks the best of the three options. So I've included the two additional cables in black and I've made some other subtle mods. I'll cover how to add all of these details in my mod instructions that you can find on Rubricable and that I've linked to in the description of this video. Before I wrap this video up, I just want to share a few final thoughts with you and observations about this Back to the Future Time Machine Lego set. I would describe the standard version of this model very much as a flawed gem. What I mean by that, it is a gem in terms of it being a beautifully designed model. I think the Lego designer has done a superb job at capturing the shapes of the DeLorean time machine from Back to the Future in Lego form. And I really like it that we have three options to customize this set to represent each of the iterations of the Back to the Future time machine from the three different movies. But it is a flawed set. You've already seen me talk about the different issues that this set has and of course present fixes and ways for you to enhance and improve the set to address those flaws. I'm really happy with the finished result and I think after doing all these modifications and improvements this is a set that I'm finally really happy with and will be quite happy and proud to display in my LEGO collection. Unfortunately however this experience has left me feeling a little bit dispirited. And what I mean is that this excessive use of off-color scheme parts we're seeing more and more in recently released LEGO sets. I think it's really becoming common practice now in larger sets from either this Creator Expert line, LEGO Ideas sets, and seeing it in UCS sets. And to me, it's actually a bit concerning and disappointing. I think as adult LEGO builders, and these sets are targeted for an adult audience, we actually want our instructions to be slightly challenging and we want to enjoy that whole build experience and be rewarded by our efforts to have a beautiful finished model. 
And furthermore, we want our Lego sets that are targeted for adults to be detailed and as close or accurate to the reference material or subject matter as possible without skimping on any details. And finally, we really want our Lego sets to be those sort of finished and beautiful display pieces that we can put in our collection and show off to our friends and family. And I think on those three points, this Back to the Future Time Machine set unfortunately misses the mark. But as you've seen in this video, and the whole purpose of this video is to inspire you and to let you know that there is a way or there are ways and methods to improve and fix the issues with this set so that it becomes that beautiful display piece that we kind of wanted in the first place. On that note, if you have any comments or questions about the modifications that are presented in this video, please leave me a comment in the comments section of this video. And if you have a question, I certainly will read it and get back to you. That's all for me from this video. Thank you for watching. Happy modding. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style?